one of the greatest shocking twists of the second season of Big Sky is we'll be seeing you again in this series. We had left um, Rick Legowski dead in the middle of the first season. How is it possible to see him resurrected? What happened? What you can anticipate about this? Well, I didn't anticipate it at all, Simone. It was a, it was a surprise to me. And uh, my friend, Brian uh, Garrity, who's, who plays Ronald on the show, he, uh, he texted me with a picture of uh, a script that he had been given that said I had an that Rick had an identical twin. That was the first I heard about it was when, uh, when it was written in a script. So it was a surprise to me. And, and when I spoke with uh, the creators, when I spoke with um, uh, the executive producer of the show, um, we talked about what his intention was for the character. And uh, I liked the idea of uh, finding a road to some sympathy for Ronald in a way that would be disturbing for the audience. And that Wolf was the agent of that, of that sympathy in some ways. But I also love the opportunity to create someone so totally different um, than Rick Ligarski in the world of Big Sky. It was, a, it was an interesting challenge. We're talking about two different characters between Wolf and Rick Ligarski. So yes. I want to focus a little bit on Rick Ligarski because he was a villain who shows your great acting talent and technique because Thank you. it must not have been easy to play him. There is a Rick before the bullet in the brain and another one after. That is completely different character and look in particular. What's this change of look and personality the most difficult aspect in interpreting him? Um, I, David Kelly's words in the first episode particularly were so, um, were so vivid that the transition from one to the other and the shock of it was so clear. The delicacy of playing such a good liar. Um, how, do you, how do you lie convincingly to the other characters and allow the, act, allow the um, uh, audience in on the lie? I mean, that's a really, that's a balancing act that I really found challenging in the first season of the show because I, uh, once, once he is revealed, then everyone else has, his entire history is, he has fooled everyone up to this point. So it's really an interesting problem to continue to try to fool people purely uh, and not give anything away to them at the same time that the audience is aware of his motive. We found your new character on a mountain house uh, to grow animals and fruits with a long hair very smiling and joyful. How did yes. you feel with long hair on your head? Did you wear a little bit nostalgic about your youth? <laughs> <laughs> I never had this hair, Simone. Oh, never, okay. <laughs> no, no. Um, the hair was really a kind of a, a re reflection of the, my desire and the desire of the writers and to have a character that had a loving relationship. Rick's relationship was so problematic with his wife. Uh, one of mistrust, one of an inability to be intimate, fully intimate, and and um, it was it was the challenge of this season to find a relationship with a partner that was fully realized for me. That was fifty fifty partnership, no matter how terrifying that would be. And um, the hair was kind of a metaphor for that because uh, any man who has hair like that, so well kept partner doing it for him likely that's how i feel about it so it was a way in which an opportunity could be that that the intimacy of having his hair combed by someone else uh, experiencing that in a uh, that kind of feminine experience mostly a feminine experience is is one that i i thought was an interesting juxtaposition between rick and wolf that's really where it came from uh, do the script writers tell you how the story will, will evolve on your character for the entire season? Or do you know just the necessary as us, as uh, the audience, during the recording? Sometimes uh, it depends on the circumstances. Um, in terms of, uh, I knew more about Wolf's journey because of circumstances than I did about Rick's. I mean, I knew, I knew, a gener I knew Rick had a shelf life, obviously. Uh, uh, a person uh, that 
despicable uh, doesn't survive a television show, you know, mostly. They don't survive that. Even, even uh, you know, uh, uh, Walter White doesn't survive Breaking Bad, you know? Yeah. So, so there, there's a need, uh, there's a need in the audience to find some, uh, I, I would say justice uh, for a person as bad as he is. Um, but interestingly enough, I didn't know how it was gonna happen. And when, when uh, it became a Brooks character, Marilee, who had been so duped and abused for so long that it was a very satisfying uh, piece of writing. For Wolf, because of uh, you know production circumstances, I know a little bit. I know a little bit more about where Wolf is headed. I think it's also ultimately, ultimately satisfying in a roller coaster kind of way, and and I I love that about the show. The show is always about shock. You know, the show is always about keeping the audience on the edge of their seat, and it does such an amazing job with that. That is so hard to do well. And it, they just continue to push the envelope on that. So uh, I hope people uh, continue to enjoy the show that way because that's what its gift is. Writing the script, did you were more scared or more intrigued by your characters in this series? I mean, I'm always, I'm always intrigued more than I am frightened for the most part. Um, Rick's, Rick is, I mean, I've played a lot of terrible people and uh, and uh, um, and uh, I, I always try to find, I, I always find some humanity in all that because I, I do believe that the evil that is perpetrated in the world is perpetrated by human beings. I've been watching a little bit more Hitchcock. There's on Criterion, they have a Hitchcock collection right now. And, and I, I love his ability to find humanity in every every terrible person for the most part they are definitely silhouettes he loves the heavy he loves everything about the frames he even as a younger filmmaker he did that but he also wanted the audience to feel some conflict and if i don't if i don't create a character that that the audience feels conflicted about. I'm not doing my job when I'm playing someone who's doing the things they're doing because these things are done by people you know. I know, I know them. They're walking around us all the time and we don't know they're doing them. Uh, this evil isn't easy to find. No. It's sprinkled about us in, our, in the very hearts of ourselves. Curiosity time, did you take home that wonderful poster, hardback of you in real size that appears at a certain point of Legarski house after an episode at the middle of the episode. Did you have it out in your, in your home now? Uh, uh, I, I can tell you honestly, even if I had wanted to take it home, it would never have survived. <laughs> okay. it, would be in, it, it could potentially survive in the garage. <laughs> My wife would not have that in our house now. I mean, it's really funny. Like I have a picture that my dad uh, had in his office. It's a, it's a bear hunt, painting of a bear hunt. And I'm sure like every married man in the history of humanity, uh, that bear hunt picture is, it's never gonna show in our house. It's never gonna be in our house. I'm gonna have to find an office that'll, that I can put it in because okay. it'll never be in my house. Okay. <laughs>